I'm like, which camera am I looking at? Um, I'm tired from playing basketball, getting my shoot on. Thanks. I was gonna say, yeah. thanks for working me out, but that came from here. <laughs> okay. All right, so thank you so much for joining another episode of It's All Necessary with Tiffany Sage. As a reminder, this space is a reminder to all of us that every life experience that we go through, whether big or small, it's only to propel us and prepare us for the next level in life. So without further ado, oh, also do the regular, you know, like, subscribe, share, and just, yeah, share the positive vibes. So today, today on this glorious day, we have special guest Miller McCoy in the mother freaking building. I'm in his building, but nonetheless, <laughs> Miller McCoy. Hello, thank you for having me, you're, Tiffany. You're so welcome. Miller is the genius behind the clothing line, Clothing Human, and owner of Limitless Branding Agency. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Thank Let's you. get into it. Let's do it. Yes, thank okay, you. so start off with childhood. Where are you from? And what's your fondest childhood memory? Yeah, so I'm from, uh, Iowa. It's a flyover state in the middle of the USA. Tell me about Iowa. Yeah. What should we know about Iowa? Um, well, right now, just about everybody knows Caitlin Clark from Iowa. Ooh, okay. She, uh, you know, that's that's kind of our stud right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she, you know, uh, and uh, but it's a corn state. The, the main thing mm. that's going on there is agriculture. Okay. Right. Uh, most of the people that I knew growing up, uh, you, you know, the, the walks of life that they're getting into now is um, uh, agriculture, insurance or uh, like construction stuff. Got you. You, okay. you know, th there's not a whole lot of this sort of industry mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. Right. The, um, we're trying to make that. We're trying yeah. to build that. You know, uh, th there's a lot of upcoming musicians. There's a lot of upcoming creators and creatives. But I was a very small place. It's a. Uh, mm. Everybody kind of knows everybody, Got right? You. Did uh, you like that? Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah. it's it's good. So actually, when I was a when I was a kid, I was a before I was into fashion and the mm -hmm. arts and everything like that. I was really into theater and I was also really into magic. I was a oh wow no this sounds like an Iowa thing <laughs> I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah. So wait, yeah. tell me now about the magic. So yeah, I was a uh, uh, so. I have chronic pain and chronic nausea. Okay. I've had it since birth, um, mm -hmm. and it forced me to kind of take a different path in life, right? I wasn't, I'd miss hundreds of, you know, like 60 to 80 days of school a year. I wouldn't Whoa. be able to do the typical sports. I wouldn't okay. be able to have typical friend groups mm -hmm. like everybody mm -hmm. else does kind of growing up. Um, and I would always, I'd be in bed a lot, right? Yeah. I'd be at doctors or hospital or stuff like that. So I'd always be like, well, I, I enjoy doing stuff, right? Being stagnant, even as a kid and sick, I, 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 it would drive me mad, Yeah. right? And so one thing that I could do and pick up on is I could use my hands and if you gave me a deck of cards and you gave me a magic book or you mm. gave me a YouTube channel that I could learn mm -hmm. magic from, mm -hmm. I could be laying in bed and shuffling cards and wow. working on magic tricks uh -huh. and doing all that sort of stuff. So uh, I kind of picked it up around the age of nine or so. Mm -hmm. And actually by the age of 12, I was doing it at a, a semi-professional level. I would do birthday parties, corporate events. This sounds uh, like, you know, like in school when they're like, give us a fun fact about yourself. Yeah, this is so yeah. random. And I love how you used the the situation that you were in. Yeah. You got a positive out of it as opposed to just like laying there and being a vegetable. Like, I yeah. guess I'm just going to be like this for the rest of my life. Well, you know, it, that that's how it first started. I was just laying mm. there and, and I was going mm -hmm. crazy. I, you know, I... Uh, I've always been a very active kid. I've always mm -hmm. had a lot of energy, right? And and so it was a, a a good healthy outlet for me to be able to 
you know, put that energy and put that yeah. focus somewhere. <laughs> All right, so my name is Tiffany Sage. I'm a confidence and clarity life coach. If you're feeling unfulfilled in your life or you just, you don't know what's next for you, I'm your girl. I can take you to new levels of clarity. Click the link in my bio for a complimentary, yeah, I said it, complimentary call with me so we can get your life on track. Click the link so we can connect. Right, um, and so yeah, I, I would do, a lot of local magic shows and you, you know since it is a small town and, mm -hmm. and a small state I guess uh, people all around started hearing oh there's this little say, 12 year old Miller is doing magic <laughs> Miller is doing yeah, magic yeah. a little ma magic kid running around right yeah. like, uh, you know there'd be little uh, uh, insurance companies or banks or whatever and yeah. then have their holiday parties and oh get that little magic boy oh, in here you, you know oh my gosh and so yeah, that, yeah that's kind of how that started word traveled fast around my town mm -hmm. um <laughs> so yeah, i i i was known at first as the magician and um it, I, I actually had dreams of being a, like a las vegas magician and performing on wow. the strip and stuff mm -hmm. I, um, but by the age of 13, I was actually traveling out to Vegas and, and I was doing, doing, doing magic. Yeah. I, I was training wow. under professional magicians. I was mm. doing, uh, magic shows. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'd come out here to LA to the magic castle. It's uh, like a, a, a magic club, I guess. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. In, yeah, ho yeah. in Hollywood uh -huh. there. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I would do stuff at the magic castle. I went to New York. There's a. Uh, a magic school called Tannins, mm -hmm. um, and I had the opportunity to be at, at Tannins a couple times and, and do magic at a fairly high I level. Love that. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, uh, because word word also travels fast in mm -hmm. a small town, and uh, you know, with the issues and the, the the health stuff that I had, it causes issues on reliability, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially at that age when mm -hmm. I didn't really know how to cope and I didn't really know how to manage. So. You know, if you ask me two weeks in advance, do you want to do this magic show? Yeah, I absolutely want to do that yeah. magic show. Book it, right? When push comes to shove, though, mm -hmm. and I'm in bed vomiting, oh, horrible pain, and stuff like that, you. and can't make the magic mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. well, that's a very bad look, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, when I was around 15 or so, I began mm -hmm. to kind of have a slow falling out with magic uh, because I, I, it, I just. I would sign up for to do a show or do this, and, mm. and you know I, it, I couldn't make yeah, it right. Yeah. Um, and so then it, it kind of made me shift my focus a little bit. What's some other things I could do, right? Pivot. Yeah. Pivot. I feel that's such a big thing um, that I've been hearing from my past guests. Yeah. Pivoting, and as you were saying it, like the the sickness causing you not to be reliable and it's not you it's just again you know, your body and stuff yeah that is like oh this is the part in his life where the pivot starts and, yes you know. yeah so yeah uh, um and also you know being a young kid and starting my magic business mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that in career i had to teach myself how to do graphic design by the age of 12 mm -hmm. i learned html so i could build my own website mm -hmm. like I, I was uh learning all the adobe products I, yeah Illegally shout out to Adobe. <laughs> shout out Adobe. Mm -hmm. Illegally downloading them on my mom's yeah. computer. <laughs> yeah. You know, probably getting all the viruses on there and stuff. You know, that was me and Photoshop back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's actually what I made my pivot to was was graphic design and uh, y y you know just uh, computer arts. Got it. Um, and I understood what I was doing, but you know, back then, fifteen years ago or so. Graphic design wasn't like that cool of yeah. a thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody, it, it wasn't That's really so viewed as, as like yeah. art, mm -hmm. right? And so I thought what I was creating was art. I'd flip the computer around and say, hey, check it out. Yeah, Look what yeah, I yeah. made. Everybody's like, cool, dude, but that's on a computer. Yeah, like, yeah. Paint it or draw it or whatever. It's like, okay, well, you know, so I started thinking at that point, what are ways I could make this a tangible mm -hmm. piece of art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where I found, you know, I could make poster prints, I could put my design mm -hmm. on t-shirts, I could, mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of what's began exposing me to the to the fashion world and, and the product world, really. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I guess, one, one of my fondest memories growing up, that, that that's actually a, a hard question. It. Really? Yeah, th there's, there's, a, there's a lot of very fond memories and mm -hmm. there's a lot of, not so fond memories yeah. as well, um, but I guess I I don't know. I I would say it's got to be either something to do with my mom or my family. Mm. I, I'm I'm shout out to mothers. Shout out, yeah, shout out to mothers. <laughs> shout out to my mom. Mm -hmm. she, 
she's been through the ringer with me. That's Ooh. that's for darn sure. You, you know, yeah. uh, she was there every doctor's appointment. She was, oh. you, you know, every every time I'm I'm sick, she's nursing for me, seeing what wow. you, you know. Um, and so, just yeah, I I don't know. I guess if there's one specific mm. memory I can really pinpoint that's the fondest, but just in general, I I would say just growing up with with my mom and and in a uh, always trying to do what's right, always trying to do what's mm-hmm. good, always mm-hmm. trying to fix a situation, right? Uh, or, or uh, you know, just the the level of care that there was there. I was going to say, you know, it sounds like it was wrapped up with love, yeah. wonder, yeah. or wonder with the magic and yeah. the graphic design stuff. Yeah. And previous to when we were recording, but you said like outside and just riding bikes and stuff like that all all day long i yeah. like your childhood yeah <laughs> role models growing up any yeah yeah mm-hmm. um so at first it would start kind of in the the magic and the performance mm-hmm. side um this is david blaner or something <laughs> yeah D- david okay. blaner uh-huh. i always thought was so cool mm-hmm. there's another guy chris angel i thought oh, yeah, he i thought yeah, he yeah, was yeah, sick yeah. you know I, uh, I would always watch his, his TV show. He had a TV show called Mind Freak. I, I would watch that show. I, I, I bought his magic kit oh when I was gosh, a kid, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, David Blaine, I always thought was so mysterious <laughs> and so cool, right? Like, um, and, and also my, my mom and dad, too, they, they, you know. Um, but then... I don't know if it would have been like I, I don't think that it was necessarily like a celebrity or yeah. like anything like that you know in Iowa where I'm from like I was that's, gonna ask is that a thing or is a, it like I mean I don't know if the entertainment industry has changed that much from back then but and I think social media makes it even more accessible now yeah. but it back in the day in Iowa was it just like Oh, those crazy people in that crazy town. A little bit. This is the got you. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. 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 It, 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 uh, actually, a lot of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. People would watch TV or you know the news and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and, and they would see all these people and some you know, but none of my friends and peers really growing up talked about celebrities or mm-hmm. or like that was just not really a thing. Yeah. Right. It, it's like we just lived in our own little world yeah. in our own little community mm-hmm. sort of deal and uh you know i i would think you know our our i'd have a friend's dad who would go and buy a hippie van right mm. and like that's that's what's oh, cool that's so, yeah, right yeah, yeah. like like uh or wait you, would you guys go camping in this or something or it's just yeah oh, <laughs> yeah okay. yeah mm. uh and uh yeah a lot of stuff like outdoors stuff uh, a lot of fishing okay. um camping yeah. hunting this sounds you know. like what kind of commercial so many i'm just <laughs> thinking like clothing wise like maybe urban outfitters ish <laughs> outside sure. then like bass yeah. ba- the, bass know? pro shop yeah bass like i'm thinking shop. of all the yeah. commercials where it's like oh not who does that, but it's like, that seems like a great vacation. And that was your reality. That's my, yeah, that was our reality. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, a lot, just, just simple stuff, mm-hmm. right? It, very simple place, very simple times. Uh, you, you know, I was a, an amazing place. I, I'm blessed and thankful and grateful to have grown up there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I knew around the age of nine when I was really getting into finding magic yeah. and finding mm-hmm. theater and stuff like that, that I, I longed for more, right? I, mm. I, the city was was great that I grew up in and everything like that, yeah. but it, it, it didn't fit me. I, I didn't want to go into agriculture insurance. Mm. I didn't want to do the the, the regular common yeah. stuff, right? I, and so I always kind of was, I, I stood out from the crowd a little bit, right? Um, I always knew I, I wanted a little bit more yeah. than what, what it had to offer me. Shout out to you knowing self because it doesn't always happen to people at a younger age and it's like for people who it happens later it's like oh my gosh this whole time i've been living someone else's dream you know and and being afraid of disappointing say parents or you know the guardian or even betraying themselves yeah you know yeah so with oops so with your upbringing in iowa how would you say that it has shaped you for better and for worse yeah so i'll start i'll start on the better side i think you know 
the, the Midwest is known for hard work, honest, uh, you, you know, just putting your, giving it your all, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I would say, you know, venturing out here to the Los Angeles area, that's kind of carried me a long way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when I, I remember when I was first moving out here, I, you, you, I'm, a, I'm a very hard worker. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wake up, I work, I go to sleep working, right? Like yeah. it's all around the clock. That, that's, my work is kind of an embodiment of my life, right? And so uh, I have good morals, good ethics, hard work, talent, you, you know, stuff like that. So being able to come out here and show that to kind of top level people, yeah. right? It gives me a little bit of an upper hand than mm. somebody who might have been born out here mm-hmm. and, you, you know, going to the, fancy person's house that's got the McLaren or the Ferrari yeah. out front or whatever that woos and awes me right I'm I'm a kid from Iowa mm-hmm, You're, mm-hmm. I see Ford trucks and Chevy trucks like yeah. in, in cornfields yeah. right I don't see houses like this and views like this yeah. right like that's not where I come from mm-hmm. and so you know seeing that gets me fired up and inspired and like I can, this is obtainable yes. yeah, I'm yeah. here right let me you can touch it I can touch mm-hmm. it I it this is real life, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. it's not just movies and stuff like mm-hmm. that now, right? Like this is real. So I, I, using that as kind of an advantage to just try to outwork and just try to be as good and honest of a guy that I can be, right? That's, I think that's what's kind of allowed me to to se- separate myself from, from the generalized yeah. crowd mm-hmm. out here where they're used to it. It's not impressive to them, right? But at first... I've, blew me away yeah. I was like all right this is what I want <laughs> yeah. you know and so like yeah yeah <laughs> and then on the contrary on the, side yeah. uh-huh. right I guess um you, you know still on that exposure side where it's like mm. I I wasn't ex- in the Midwest and in Iowa and stuff like that like everybody's kind of the way I am it's you, most people are honest hard-working people and stuff yeah. like that and when I had first made my move out here, uh, I had an opportunity to be uh, working with some high-end designers, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I was promised a, uh, a big salary, and I was promised all you know. Oh, all this the sort city of, of yeah. promises <laughs> that don't manifest into anything, and then it's like, you know what? Yeah. No one's gonna do this for me, and yeah. it's not like a sense of entitlement, but I can imagine because I feel f- similar with your upbringing. It's kind of like if I do good, good, they're gonna do right by me. And then you know, people in this city is not. That's and not also how it too, goes. I don't. I want to make a distinction. It's not people from here. Sometimes it's the others coming yeah. here, and then they give LA a bad rap. But yes. it is like that sometimes. Yes, you know. It, it, and that's exactly the situation. Yeah, the guy that I was working for was not from here, it, it, right? It, mm-hmm. uh, it, and but but he gave off this allure and this illusion of. Oh yeah, you do all this work for me. I, I I'll get you on this big salary. Mm-hmm. I'll be, you know get you. You know you can live in the house. Yeah, and you can do yeah. all this stuff, right? And I'm showing up to this house. It's got Ferraris, McLarens, Escalades, wow. right? And it's I, like, why would I not believe this? Why? why because would I'm I not? seeing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So na- I was naive. Mm-hmm. I, I was naive to the whole situation. And uh, actually, at the day that we were supposed to get our contracts and everything like that, I yeah. I go to the house. All, all the locks have been changed. There's no cars oh, in the driveway. No. no one's answering our calls. It, it, and it was actually myself and uh, S- Stephen, okay. uh, the, the other co-founder of Limitless with mm-hmm. me. And, and we both had this opportunity. Well, what we thought we was thought an opportunity, was, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, it turned out to be a big scam. We gave this guy three months of dedicated every single day, oh you gosh. know, Monday through Monday. How uh, did you handle that? Uh... Well, it, it was really challenging because mm-hmm. Stephen and I, at that point, we were we were subleasing an apartment from mm-hmm. somebody, and this was right as COVID hit as well. Mm-hmm. So, I had I had moved out here um, right before COVID started, mm-hmm. and I had moved out here to pursue it, taking human to the next level. Mm-hmm. I, I was doing I was doing pop up stores, and I was mm-hmm. doing uh, a lot of stuff locally with yeah. my brand. And I was doing a lot of what I, what what we call product seeding. So I would put together care packages and stuff like that, and I would ship them to a lot of like musicians yeah. and, and influencers that were here in LA, some in New York, Texas, Tennessee, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but to the bigger cities, and I would have 
you know, celebrities wearing it while they're going yeah. out on, on their stage for their show mm-hmm. or whatever and get that magazine shot yeah. or whatever. And so I was like, okay, if I can get enough funds from these pop-ups and from selling my merchandise to be able to make it out to L.A., I can be there, boots on the ground, and I can actually go build a relationship with these yeah. people, style them in person, get a part of their team. You mm-hmm. know, that was the thought process. So I ended up making the move out here, um, and I think it was like four days. I remember listening to the radio with my mm. brother on the way here, mm-hmm. and on the radio they're talking about this COVID thing. And, yeah. You know, and is it going to come to America? Mm-hmm. You know, all this sort mm-hmm. of stuff. Well, four days after I get out here, mm-hmm. boom, lockdown happens. And so, you know, fashion district, which I have, I was dreaming of, mm-hmm. of being able to go and, and, and source from mm-hmm. there and get really hands on. Cause in Iowa, we don't have any of that yeah. stuff, right? I'm on the internet having to order everything in, wow. do, you know, doing my own screen printing mm-hmm. with my buddy Ryland back at home. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so, you know, it, I was just dreaming about it in, in Melrose and Fairfax, right? It, it, like I was salivating out yeah, of mouth yeah, getting yeah, here yeah. and then boom, lockdown happens. Everything shut down. So now it's like, oh. <laughs> Well, now what? <laughs> right? Now damn. what do I do? So, we, oh damn. Yeah. So then, and then at that point in time, my original roommates—they mm-hmm. were wedding photographers. Mm-hmm. And they were like wedding events, mm-hmm. uh, uh, concerts, all, all that sort of yeah. stuff. But then, once lockdown happens, you know, all their gigs start drying up. There's no more oh, live wow. events. Yeah. You, you know, they're not yeah. getting booked to go do shoots anymore and stuff like that. And they too were originally from Iowa. Mm. And, uh, you know, they ended up looking at me. Shout out Jason and Nina, by the way. They, they actually live about 10 minutes away mm-hmm. from here right now. But uh, they, they ended up looking at me and they, you know, hey, man, we're getting gigs back in Iowa because I was not really shut down. And, like, we can keep business going over there. Uh-huh. But we're going to have to move. We're going to have to leave. Like, Oh, my gosh. And so, I, you know, I don't really have very much this money at this like point. sounds like life-lifing. It, yeah. <laughs> life-lifing was happening. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh so they end up moving out. Now I'm stuck with a two bedroom apartment. Wow. I can barely make my own half of the yeah. rent work. You and know, LA is expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I'm in these fashion group chats, right, on Instagram and stuff like that with other brand owners. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm just I'm hitting all the group chats. Say, hey, somebody come visit me in LA, right? So somebody come oh, come check it so out, smart. right? Yeah. Like, I got an open room. Come stay if you like it. Stay. There is a gem <laughs> right there. Two things. One everybody watching listening plug yourself into the communities where you are supported right yeah. and then two being proactive not just sitting there like waiting for disaster to strike but you know putting yeah. the word out there because i know years ago that it would be so hard for me to ask for help because it's yeah. just like i don't why i don't want to ask for help because then what if no one responds and then it's like i look stupid but then it's like but what if you don't ask for help and you're then you're gonna look stupid because of this life thing that's gonna happen yes yes either yeah either way it's a it's a coin flip yeah you you know it's you never know what somebody's gonna Mm -hmm. say right and and closed mouths don't get fed right so it's uh so i'm hitting all the group chats hey somebody come visit me hey somebody you know come out here come check it out You, you know and uh steve he goes, you know, he responded back, yep, I'll, you know, I'll come. And, mm-hmm. and he had originally bought a round trip and then gets to the airport. And I think one of his flights gets canceled or delayed or something like that. So then he ends up going to the front desk. Cause he's like, no, I, I want to get out there. You, mm-hmm. you know, I want to mm-hmm. check this stuff out. Mm-hmm. And so he ends up changing his flight schedule to just get a one way mm. as opposed to a round trip yeah. and got some credit back or something. I don't, I don't know the whole situation, mm-hmm. but he ends up just taking a one way out here. And the day he gets here is actually the day that I got that internship, mm-hmm. uh, that, 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 that three month, one. that three okay. month thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I go there the first day and, and on my way out, they're like, Hey, by the way, do you know anybody else like you that's willing to, oh, to do this? Yeah. I go, life. I got gotcha. you. Also life, 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 where life go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I come racing back home <laughs> to the apartment. Mm-hmm. I go to Steve. Steve, you never believe it, man. There's oh a crazy house in the hill that's got McLarens. It's yeah, got yeah. for our, you know, all, all, all this stuff. Like, they're looking for another person. Yeah. Like, dude, come with You're me. You're the guy. You know, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like, let's do this <laughs> yeah. together, you know? And so, th- yeah, uh, we ended up starting that journey. Uh, they had asked Steve to move out here full time. And so Steve ends up getting a flight going back to Rochester, New York, where he's from. Mm-hmm. He packs up his car. And just drives out and he 
you know, now Steve's my roommate, right? And, and so got that figured out and covered now, mm-hmm. right? And, and we both have this thing going on, right? We're, we're doing this internship. Yeah. We promise all this big stuff. We're like, we're going we're gonna to make this, mm-hmm. right? We're going to figure this thing mm-hmm. out. And, uh, uh, you know, push comes to shove three months later, the whole thing kind of fizzles out. Mm-hmm. And about two weeks after that, we actually end up getting an eviction letter. Oh, my God. On, on so our keep apartment. Going. In, yeah. Uh, you, you know, we... We were paying our rent, but it was a subleased apartment, so we're just Venmoing oh. this guy. And because COVID happened, he was under the belief, ah, oh, you know, I don't got to send in rent. They're going to do the, mm. the COVID relief thing, you know. Well, we were in Santa Monica. Santa Monica plays by their own rules, mm-hmm. right? And so then they left it up to the building owners to make the decision. But whoever owned our apartment building said, no, you, you owe rent, and mm-hmm. if you can't pay rent, get out of here. Mm. So... We were so confused because we're paying rent every month. We're, you yeah. know, like we're thinking, wait, what's going on? We get this letter on the door, and that's where we also learned you couldn't even sublease this apartment out. Oh Jesus! So it's just like too full. We can't go to the the owners of wow. the property and say, well, no, we've been paying our rent. We'll just pay you because, yeah. y- you know, they're saying, wait, so who's subleasing it to you? Oh now? my the god! This feels issue. like to when this was happening. Did you just feel like you know what? I'm going back to Iowa, or it's like. No, so, we need to figure this out. Tiffany, yeah, that, that, you know, there was, yeah, you, you know, occasionally those thoughts were coming into my mind, but I remember vividly looking at Steve at her kitchen counter, just honestly feeling completely defeated and, and, and just, mm. I, I looked up and I'm like, Steve, like, mm. the way I feel right now, mm. I know if I go back to Iowa, this feeling will be tenfold. Oh. Mm-hmm. Steve, I, I'm down to to thug it out in the car. Yeah. Right? Like, wow. I, I, mm-hmm. I'll go homeless before I before I go back. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and Steve looked at me straight in the eyes. He goes, me too, man. Like, oh, we're in this wow. together. Mm-hmm. Y- you know? And luckily, push comes to shove. We ended up finding a spot uh, kind of East Hollywood off of Normandy Ave. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> the, we originally were looking at a two-bedroom mm-hmm. that we were like, we have no idea how we're going to make this work, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, this is way out of our price range, mm-hmm. but, like, w- w- what's going on? And then he's like, you know, I, I do have a four-bedroom as well that, that like, mm. if you split it up by the rooms, it's a lot better price. You want to mm. see it? And we're like, okay, show yeah. it. But we it's just two of us right now. Yeah. Steve and I look at each other. We're like, we know other people that have wanted to come out here. Oh. Get on FaceTime, and we just start calling people literally as we're touring this other townhouse. So proactive. I he love get, that. Yeah, he gets a buddy that picks up the phone. We say a price for the room, and he goes, yeah, I'll take it. I'm get in. out. Yeah, so now we've got three people down. And, and then, and then you know, I'm going through all my phone yeah. contacts. I'm hitting everybody yeah. that I've talked to that I know wanted to move out here. And I find two buddies that were like, you know what? We'll split that one room. Mm. Boom. Now, by the time we're leaving this tour, that where we originally were going to see a two-bedroom, so we now have a four-bedroom fully locked in. We've got the people that are like, where do we send the money? Yeah. Y- you know? And so uh, from there, that's, you know, we looked at the guy and said, you know, you know Dang, what year was paperwork. this? This would have been about four years ago okay. at this point. Okay. I've been about out here for about five and a half years. Gotcha. W- when did COVID start? I feel like it was 2020. It was right? 2020? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then 2020 yeah, was when it was so, like the lockdown stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it was right, it, it was shortly after that time. It, it was right around then. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we ended up moving into this four bedroom townhouse. Mm-hmm. We had buddies that would fly in and, and stay for a couple weeks in mm-hmm. one room. The other guy would stay for a couple weeks there, you know. And, and we just were figuring out how to make it work. And, yeah. and that's where Steve and I really started working a lot on our direct brands you, you know because we didn't we weren't doing the internship thing anymore that that whole thing fizzled out um and, and we were working a lot on our direct brands and we were doing collaborations together mm-hmm. uh we were we were working with a lot of musicians out here styling them mm-hmm. and getting our clothes on them uh and then i, I ended up working with a, a lady named Hayes mm-hmm. who does phenomenal leather work and uh oh, it, it actually derived from that internship gone wrong. Gotcha. She had, she had a part in that business, but she had also gotten screwed over and screwed out mm. of it fr- from the whole entire situation. And so uh, we ended up just kind of partnering up and doing our own thing and uh, just kind of making that work. And, and, and Hayes was able to kind of ha- – really take that to the next yeah. level with me where I, you, you know, I was getting a very deep understanding of the fashion industry Ooh, out And here. you're also getting 
what seemed as if like a um what's it called dead end it turned into a new path now yeah and the gem that i'm seeing is like you can't screw good people <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it yeah Alrighty, moving on to the next segment, 100% necessary. So yeah. these are like absolute needs. All right. Two characteristics you feel are necessary to handle the journey of entrepreneurship. Uh, patience and dedication. Mm. Um, and I and I struggle with the patience. Yeah, uh, I, I did too. Yeah, with when I used to do music, not used to, but when I was heavy in the music. Yeah. I was just like, oh, God, if this doesn't happen, like, tomorrow, I'm just going to. And then tomorrow will come in my play. Well, God, if this doesn't happen tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I'm still working on the patience myself. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's an uphill battle. But but with the dedication, you know it's going to come. You know yeah. it's going, you know, there's always another tomorrow. There's mm -hmm. always another tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? And. I'm a firm believer that in entrepreneurship or, or, or creative ventures or anything that you're setting out and taking on your own, you only fail when you stop. It's so true. You, 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 if you're trying so it true. and you're doing it, mm -hmm. you didn't fail. Mm -hmm. You're making it work. You're figuring it out. You're, you're, you're taking one step at a time. But the second that you give up, the second that you stop, that's when you failed. Yeah. Right? You, you, you know, whether it be failed yourself, failed the business, failed others, whatever it may be. Right? And so... You know, that's kind of on the dedication side. Mm -hmm. It's, you just got to keep going. And, and, you know, life's going to life, right? You're going to get. Nice and hard. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get a hundred doors closed in your face yeah. before you get one that opens. And you just got to be okay with that rejection and understand that my time will come. I got to mm -hmm. stay dedicated to what I'm doing, to my craft, to, to just keep going. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. you just got to keep going. Uh, yeah. Two pieces of advice that you've applied to your life. Uh, or I, two pieces of, of advice that truly resonates with you. Yeah. I, I, I would go back to you only fail when you quit. Ooh, okay. I, um, I, you know, I, I've, that's actually kind of been a, a more recent one that I've really – begin kind of living by mm -hmm. uh within the last year or so i never really viewed it like that mm -hmm. I, you know mm -hmm. i always viewed it like you know i'd put a number on the board and i'd say i gotta get i gotta hit yeah. this number i gotta get this many people i gotta get my clothes on this person right and like you know and i put a date next to it, and it, it that date would come and i wouldn't be there yeah and, mm. and yeah i'd feel a little discouraged or whatnot uh, but you, yeah go. Uh. i think that's kind of like the downside of setting a goal Setting a goal is great because then it's like you're intentional, you have something to work towards. But when that thing does not happen by that date, it's just very crumbling. Yeah. But then also, I guess, depend on people's faith and stuff. It's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm co-creating my life. Yeah. God's co-piloting with me. And so Amen. I thought it was this, but God said something else. But God's taking that is the path. part where sometimes it's just like, yeah, ah, show me the way. And then on top of that, waiting or feeling or seeing the signs of what's the next new deadline then you know what i mean yeah the, the fin <laughs> as an entrepreneur <laughs> like you have to preach now <laughs> as an entrepreneur and a creative yeah. the goal line mm -hmm. always moves the finish yes. line is never the real finish mm -hmm. line it's always you know you're gonna hit there and you're gonna think oh great no 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 now the finish line's over yeah. here. You're going to get there. Now the finish line's yeah. over there. And now you're going to have a setback to be all the way back here. And that finish line's going to look impossible. But then you're going to inch your way up. You're going to be right there. Oh, okay. I'm mm -hmm. closer. And you're going to hit that. And then the finish that line part, moves yeah. a little more. It, 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 uh, entrepreneurship and creative ventures is a, is a never-ending checklist, mm. right? You're going to have a to-do list. And you're never going to be able to finish that to-do mm. list mm -hmm. for as long as you're going. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. You're, it, it, but but you're able to look back at it right yeah. years later and from an aerial point of view and be able to see all of the things that you've been able to check off. Yeah. There, there's a, there's a beautiful line from a, a an artist that we work with, but uh, turned a checklist into a bucket list. Mm. Right. And you know, that that's kind of been inspirational to me mm -hmm. um, where it's like, you know, I, I, five years ago, I didn't know what the, the, what where this would be taking me mm -hmm. right but i knew i wanted to work in the entertainment space with musicians and with celebrities and sports people and athletes and all that sort of stuff right and you you know it's taken a different path right i i it's 
I'm in the background designing their clothes and building yeah. their websites and stuff like that. Uh, but it, but I'm working with them and, I, and mm. I'm, I'm doing it with them mm. or for them, and, mm. you, you know, and all this sort of stuff. So it's like, it, it just life guides you and God guides you into different directions where, where, you know, when I was first starting my brand, it was like, oh, I'm going to be the direct stylist for all of these people. And mm-hmm. you'll see me in their entourage mm-hmm. and in their group. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, I, I did that past just a micro bit, right? But now <laughs> yeah. it's way more removed yeah. and like not like that at all, mm-hmm. right? It, it, it's on a completely opposite spectrum now. So, uh, and yeah. your story's not being done written. So, absolutely. That, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Th- th- yeah. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> Two things or places that you go to to refresh your creativity. I spend a lot of times in the mountains. I spend a Ooh, lot of time in the mountains. In, California? Or, or, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, like, like the, up here, the, there's a, t- there's the Topanga Mountains that in like mm-hmm. Santa Monica State Park and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It kind of separates you from uh, the valley yeah. into like the PCH area, okay. right? And there's just big mountain range that's right. I mean, not like massive mountains mm-hmm. like like the Rockies or anything yeah, yeah. like that, but like you know mountains. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. This is a lot compared to like the Rockies. I can't even imagine what that is right, <laughs> right? now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And from Iowa, it's flat. We 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 have mm. it, it's I didn't know flat that. farm fields, right? Okay. That's all it is. We have very little hills. Like, okay. um, and so yeah, I I'm actually recently I've been really getting into running. I I me too. Yeah. Yeah. And so I uh, my big thing is now on the weekends I lose myself running in the mm. mountains or just walking in the mountains hiking mm-hmm. you know and and i i, I like it because I, I it it gets i get away from everything i get away from the hustle and bustle of, of the daily life out here and you know up there i got no cell service <laughs> right yeah. you're not calling me so you're, say, you're yeah. not texting me um do you listen to music when you're doing it or just yes and okay. no okay. um so when i'm mm-hmm. going for it and i'm like working yeah. and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm normally listening to music. But when I'm really just trying to disconnect mm-hmm. and when I'm trying to just flush the brain and, fu- yeah. you know, reset, no, I, I'm i going, you know, I might have headphones on the top of my head and I, you know, and mm-hmm. then maybe every once in a while I'll throw Put down on, the headphones. Yeah. But, the, you know, I'll, I'll sit there with my thoughts and I'll sit there with, with listening to my feet hit the ground and the birds chirping mm, and stuff like very that. Very present. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it allows me to be very present. Right. And I uh, just try to take full advantage of that and just kind of reset and relax. And that's where I, a lot of times my thoughts will come in. I think, oh, that's you know, a good one. we're in such a, a world where we consume mm. so much, right? That you're seeing so much content. You're always listening to something. You're always, you, you know, there's always visuals going on, especially mm. a, a mm-hmm. city like this, right? Mm-hmm. There's always something to do. There's always something going on. You're always consuming something where it starts to feel like a lot of your thoughts or a lot of the things that you're saying or this you're doing so, aren't necessarily yours. You are making me, when I go home, I just want to unplug everything <laughs> and it, it may piss some people off, but it's like, I don't want to hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to hear like my cat, but like yeah. aside from him, it's just like, <laughs> I just want to hear, as you said, like the birds, and yeah. the, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. It be present, be in the moment, you know? And that's where I get a lot of my creativity from. That's where I get a lot of my ideas from. That's where, where, you, you know, otherwise I feel like a lot of the stuff is, is in a less organic sort of manner or, mm-hmm. or fashion where it's like, uh, I, there's a great book called Steal Like an Artist. And I, I, I will mm, say this. Okay. I, I fully believe in that book. I fully I, – I, I steal like an artist on a lot of yeah. things, right? But, like, the most organic, the most natural sort of stuff comes when I'm out there in those mountains mm. and it's just me and my thoughts where I'm not deriving my inspiration from this, that, the third. It, yeah. It's just my brain braining, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just working. Uh, so the mountains, I get a lot of inspiration and creativity from and, and where I find a lot of my <clears> ideas. But, you know, I, on the contrary, too, a grungy warehouse rave party at 4 a.m. Mm. in downtown, you know, in downtown Does Skid Row area. Does the same for you where it's just like, let yourself free? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let your hair not Miller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I don't frequent them often, but, mm-hmm. you, you know, when I do it, it, it's it's on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, right? Like by myself alone in the mountains with nothing to do. Mm-hmm. 
you know, early morning to 4 a.m. in a grungy yeah. warehouse party rave going yeah. on, right? Like, complete opposite in the spectrums. But I think that's also, I, I'm an intense guy. I'm an all or nothing guy, right? And, and I think that that's. When is your birthday? Not that I know much I'm about. A, uh, I'm a Leo, July 29th. Okay. I'm a Taurus, but okay. I really um, side with that whole all or nothing. Thing. Yeah. 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 You know, the, uh, so I, yeah, it's kind, it's kind of one or the other, you, you know, um, but, but primarily in this season of my life, yeah. it's been mountains. mountains. Yeah. It. Two albums, films, or books that inspire you deeply, deeply. Um, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Oh, I'm like in the very beginning that one. I'm not like reading every day. Yeah. But it's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff yeah. in there. Yeah. It, it's uh, um, actually the first time I read that book mm-hmm. was actually when I was at that Tan Ends Magic sort of mm. thing. Uh, I, I had gotten that book while I was out there. And I believe, you know, to this day, it's I, I'm I don't read like a lot of like fantasy or like mm-hmm. like uh, uh, like fiction, fiction mm-hmm. stuff like that. I, I'm I'm very business minded and okay. oriented. Uh, which is also a bit of a blessing because a lot of times when you're when you are a creative mm-hmm. and stuff like that, that's not the the two don't always go hand in yeah. hand, right? Um, it can be a deficit to either or. Yeah, yeah. And so I I've got a good balance and blend of the two, mm-hmm. and, and I'm very grateful and thankful for that, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but yeah, so so how to win friends and influence people is a phenomenal book for me, and then I think on the the album side. Uh, there, there's an album by Russ called Shake the Snow Globe. Mm. Um, I, oh, oh yes. I know that one. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. That album is, is really good. I, 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 I'm a big, I'm a big Russ fan. I was going to ask, what do you like about his artistry? And I'll just yeah. say a little piece. It's like this underdog kind of like I made it by myself kind yep. of thing. And I love um his, it's a yellow book. Yeah, I forget about like the thoughts or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a phenomenal book, and yeah. he ties it. I, I've listened to the, I haven't read the physical book, but I've listened mm-hmm. to the audiobook of it. And on the audiobook, he ties in uh, a lot of like his choruses, like at the beginning mm. of a chapter, and then like that chapter it's actually so breaks down what that chorus yeah. means and like mm. y- you know how how it speaks through and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I, I'm what I really yeah I, I do like the underdog mm-hmm. aspect of Russ. I, I was. I was listening to Russ when I was like 14 years old wow. on SoundCloud yeah. or early days and everybody, you know, Russ used to get hated on tremendously, mm-hmm. tremendously. <laughs> right. And now he's like, quite frankly, the, the largest independent yeah. musician that there is, uh, you, you know, selling out arenas and, and doing it globally. Um, it, pretty unheard of. And so I, I get a r- Russ helped me when I was, you know, with the chronic pain and all that stuff. It comes mm-hmm. when I was younger. I had lots of mental battles, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mental health battles. And a lot of his music spoke very loudly to me yeah. and, and was able to help me. It felt like I, f- I found somebody that I could kind of relate mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. and where I was from and what I wanted to do in my life that just wasn't there. And, and a lot of, I don't know, his, his music was just, just spoke to me from yeah. an early age. And, you know, I, I've, uh, uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoy a lot of a lot of his shout uh, out to Russ. Shout out Russ. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, we already touched on this though. I was going to say two self care routines. So you did say the mountains. The mountains are one. Mm-hmm. The hmm. You know, I I'm not like I'm not actually that big on like morning routines Ooh, and stuff uh, like that. Like, are you a morning person? I am a morning okay. person. Yeah, I, I get up every day between five and seven a.m. Uh-huh. and uh, so I don't believe – I, I think uh, if you're thinking about the work, mm-hmm. if you're getting ready for the work, mm-hmm. if you're talking about the work, mm-hmm. if you're manifesting the work, mm-hmm. none of those are doing the work. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're wasting time. Mm-hmm. You, you know, none of that is doing the work. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'll wake up and I'll shower – well, before I even shower, I walk into my office and I open up my laptop and I begin clearing through emails, like right as oh, I'm up. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Right? Like I, I uh, when I say my life is my embodiment of my wow. work and I wake up mm-hmm. working and I go to sleep working, mm-hmm. I, I work with, I, I 
we work on a global scale. So like we work with a lot of people over in China, yeah. Vietnam, Thailand, Mexico, South America, mm -hmm. Europe, here in America, right? So I, uh, you know, after this podcast, I'm probably gonna go into my office and I'll begin talking to the people that are on the opposite mm -hmm. side of the world because mm -hmm. it's morning time for them yeah. and it's business hours. And I'll be doing that probably until about 11, 10, 11 o'clock wow. tonight and then I'll fall asleep mm -hmm. and then I'll wake up and I'll start answering out all of my East Coast yeah. people where it's, you know, 6 oh, a.m. Yeah. for me mm -hmm. is 9 a.m. for them. Mm -hmm. They're they're hitting me up. Right. Yeah. So, so um, you, you know, the 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 ice baths and, and, and the 15 minutes of journaling and, and, and you know, the skincare routine These and all things, that stuff. Yeah. That's not me. Yeah, uh, I'm. That's not me. Great. Yeah. You know, all power to you if that if, if that's that's your thing and that's mm -hmm. what you do, you know, and if it helps you and it gets you in the right mindset. Great. Yeah. Cool. You, you know, but if that took you two hours, well, I just worked for two hours. Oh, I see now. You know, I see. I, I, I'm two Time hours ahead of you. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it, not much of like uh, my routine is work. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So then how do you avoid burnout? Uh. Uh, well, um, <laughs> burnout, I eat, sleep, breathe burnout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Burnout is uh, uh, y you're not burnt out. You feel burnt out and, and oh. you're not your feelings. Oh, good one. Yeah. Y you know, it, it's a uh, yeah, it's a real thing. Right. But just because you're sad doesn't mean you don't work. Just because you're tired doesn't mean you don't do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Just because you feel burnt out doesn't mean that the job doesn't have to get done. Oh, my right? gosh. This like, feels like, I'm hearing Iowa. Yeah. This, where it's just yeah. like keep at it the keep going the the work ethic yeah 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 it's uh um I, look i i feel burnt out lots of times mm -hmm. right um and and, and I'll, I'll be honest when i do feel burnt out you know maybe instead of talking to the other side of the world at 11 o'clock i don't know at nine o'clock i'll kick on a netflix show yeah. and I'll, I'll lay down and i'll mm -hmm. fall asleep mm -hmm. right and then i'll wake up the next morning and no matter how I'm feeling, I also think some of it stems from having the chronic pain stuff, right? It, mm. it, it just because I'm hurting or right, I, I can't let others see that. I don't want mm. others to see that. I don't mm -hmm. want others to know that, mm -hmm. right? I, mm -hmm. I have to just keep pushing through. I gotta keep mm -hmm. going, mm -hmm. right? I gotta keep working, gotta keep doing my thing. So, uh, you, you know, the, you are not your feelings and yes feelings are a very real thing and it's very good to actually be in tune and in touch with your mm -hmm. feelings but you also have to realize the separation from just because i'm feeling this way doesn't mean i can't do x that y and part, z right like part, yeah. I, I, I i wake up in the mornings and i normally my, my stomach is normally uh, ripping yeah. through me right mm -hmm. but i I'll work out. I'll open up my laptop. I'll I, mm. I I still get it going. Do you feel like when that does happen, working through it, it doesn't hurt as much because you're just focused on the work at hand. Oh, okay. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. And then I'll feel. I I guess one thing I do every morning is I open up all my blinds and I make my bed. Right. And, and that's something I've now tracked off my my checklist. Mm -hmm. And it gives me a sense of accompli yeah. uh, accomplishment, yeah. right? And so now when I can clear through my emails, another sense of accomplishment, dopamine hits, mm -hmm. right? Dopamine mm -hmm. hits. A and that, that's, that's what I thrive off of, are, are those little hits of dopamine and not the dopamine from scrolling through the phone dopamine, gotcha. but, but dopamine of actually accomplishing something or, yeah. or, or you know, I, I might have uh, a deal I've been working on for a long time and, and okay, what's the next thing I can do to push mm -hmm. it one step closer? How mm -hmm. can I get it one step mm -hmm. closer, right? Uh, that's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, I love this. Yeah, yeah. I it's a little that. different, you, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, but it works for you. It works for yeah. me. It, and quite frankly, it might not work for everybody. And it, you know, everybody's got to. Everybody has their own lane. Everybody mm -hmm. has their own path. I, none. Of, I don't think any of my roommates or any of my anybody else that I really work with in my circles or anything like that are on the same path, right? Yeah. Some of them might have their own morning routine. Some of them. You, you know, I know, I know Steve doesn't get up at 6 a.m. He gets up at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm, right. And, mm -hmm. and, he, and, and then Jake, my other roommate, right. For the longest time when we were living in our apartment, yeah, he'd sleep till the afternoon and then he'd wake up and, and start his day in the afternoon and work until 4 a.m. at night and then fall asleep. Right. Like everybody has their own paths. Everybody yeah. has their own things that work for them. And, and this is what works for me. That do with that knowing that everyone has their own way of working. Did you have to learn that, or I guess what I want to say is, did you ever try to impose like, hey man, you got to be up at da da da? Yeah. Got you, and yeah. then they're just like, 
Yeah, that, F off Miller. Like, yeah. Okay, got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, okay. all, all the time. All, okay, all the okay, time, okay. You, you know, and, and I'm very aware of it. I, I'm, you know, I, uh, I'm working on, on uh, I guess, self, you know, not self reflecting onto oh, others. Oh, like projecting. Projecting, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Not projecting onto others because everybody has their own way of life yeah. and everybody does their own thing. And at the end of the day, as long as the job got done, that's true. Job got done. I think sometimes why we project is because we think we see how it can be done better. But then it's like better to us, better to us. But to them, it's like that doesn't work with me. I'm feeling a lot of resistance. Let me do me. And as yeah. you said, if the work still gets done, then, you know. What well, at yeah. the end of the day, why it doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, yeah. So it is. So, you, I, I always tried to set meetings <laughs> for the team. Yeah. 9 a.m. sharp. That, that's it's not like, a thing. Yeah. We now move our meeting times to 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know, and or, or 11 a.m. Yeah. Right. Or, or afternoon, mm-hmm. you, you know. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. The, there is. I, I am understanding of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And now I I don't. It's not my responsibility. It's not my job. It's not. I, I don't care if I know I live this way. And I'm not expecting others to yeah. live the same, yeah. right? Um, everybody has what works for them, and at the end of the day, as long as it works for them and, and, and it and it works, yeah, let it that be. That part, you know.